markets in the last hour. We've seen this market turning around a little bit, so there's resources counters picking up quite nicely. Implants and plants at the top of the top 40 table, and that just pushing the JSE into positive territory as we head into the afternoon. Correct, Stephen. Um, markets have been at support levels and um, traders and investors have been eagerly looking to see if um, the, the the last um, previous down days and, um, and obviously we saw, we saw positive da um, a positive up day if we're going to see that coming through um, as stocks really have moved into um, what some believe are cheap territory. So a lot of bargain hunting at the moment that's really supporting our commodity prices as well as a week around today. And of course it looks like this volatility is, is something that's going to continue at least for the rest of the month of May because it's been pretty dismal. We've seen those commodity prices all over the place and really the JSE taking its direction from where those commodity prices go. Correct, Stephen. Um, we failed to to break recent highs um, at, at 30,000 on the Aussie future, and we seem to we still really are in a, a, a bull trend. Uh, we've just slight we, we had slightly dipped out, but not really. The uh, the markets haven't been really giving us a, a, a bearish signal. So investors really trying to catch. Um, the, the, the highs and lows, but really n no one really taking long-term views at this moment with all the bad news out there. And it seems like that bad news is continuing. To, to what extent is it already priced into the market? Because we know what's playing out in Europe at this stage. We also have volcanic ash clouds, tornadoes in the United States. So it just seems to keep on coming at us. Uh, correct, Stephen. There is, a, 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 like you've just mentioned, a lot of news um, out, and we've seen uh, with the oil inventories coming out of the states that there, there's been a massive increase um, in those oil inventories. We're seeing Japan with w w the, the the side effects from Japan that they're, they've actually pulled back their their, their imports and they're the, um, the third largest import. So really, um, falling off all the debt crisis we've had, and obviously we still have the Middle East crisis still on the radar, that really not being resolved. With that news out there, um, in, investors still cautious, Stephen. And then amidst all this, we have companies coming out with numbers, and we're getting some delayed reactions to those numbers. So while we had Lewis out on Monday with a, what looked like a reasonable set of results, it fell along with the rest of the market. And we're seeing, starting to see that share price picking up a bit. Likewise, we had famous brands yesterday going up, African bank investments yesterday moving up a day after the results came out. Correct, Stephen. The market um, investors, when 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 they do see a massive um, massive or, or see the a, a 600 point down there, they tend to offload their stock, regardless of how well the companies are doing. We d and, and we did see Lewis coming out with, with really excellent results. ABL's results were pretty much in line, but still very positive for them. And we should see some very good earnings results coming out in in 20, um, 2012 for them. Nedbank has a hold on that stock and um, Famous Brand has just really been aggressive. They've continued to grow. They've got plans to, to move into Nigeria and to open stores in, in the UK. So definitely a strategy that's going to work for Famous Brands and really the market really masks those, those results and obviously we've seen the benefit with them being um, being up the, the the last couple of days but it is it it, it is very con um, concerning for con um, for investors sometimes on the day when we see a company coming out with really good results and the market really punishing those companies are we starting to see buying opportunities with the market at current levels following the pullbacks we have seen this month um Stephen when one looks at the market, we see the market really seems to be holding at these levels. It's very, very good support levels, and with with the perception of all the bad news have been, you know, it, it, it has already been priced into the market. What else can really move the markets lower? Um, that for those who 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 are looking at stock and we see obviously that the last couple of days stock has been cheaper we are seeing some buying, um, bargain hunting coming through that possibly it is it, it, it is time to to nibble at stocks um but to be very cautious should should we should we see something come out um that would move the market negative to to actually exercise your stop losses of course we are still having big reactions to single news events so this afternoon we're getting durable goods orders out of the united states also some housing numbers so we could yet see the little recovery we've seen this afternoon in the market reversing again, couldn't we? 
We could, Stephen. Um, in terms of the numbers out, they are expecting those numbers to, to come out slightly um, lower than the previous lights numbers. The durable orders, they're expecting obviously the, um, the, the orders out of J Japan to really affect those numbers. Um, and then in terms of the housing index, we have seen the housing um, market in, 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 in the US really coming under pressure and still not really recovering. So if those numbers come out in line and if slightly better, we could see a nice little a, a nice little bounce this afternoon. And amidst all this, of course, the rand really reflecting the volatility we're seeing in the market. So that currency trading up to seven rand five cents uh, a short while ago, currently around seven rand and three cents. But that will give a bit of a boost to some of our resources counters, won't it? Correct, Stephen. Um, I think we're looking for a trading range of 695 to 705, even up to 7, um, 707, 708 today, possibly. Um, we're seeing the euro still really stabilised at 140, and that's really keeping the rand at current at, 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 at current levels. So until we really see something happening in the euro, if it does break below 140, we could possibly see some more weakness in the rand. But at the moment, the euro is still holding at at, at, at 140 so we were expecting to stay at, at around these levels for most of the day.